Okay, guys, we got some cringy stories to go over. Let's start with Maine. So Maine has its own C19 page on Twitter. I did not know that, but that is very important. We should all make this our homepage. Uh, it links to an article here from WMTW. First Central Maine healthcare workers received the VAX. Today is day two of VAX. We have some footage of it. Uh, I believe Dr. Shaw is going live at 2 o'clock, about an hour and a half from now. So if you go onto the main C19 Twitter page, it's actually blowing up. They're, they're posting a lot of stuff. Check this out, I'm though. So let's this is let's the watch this. Thing that's happened in such a long time. Dr. Claudia Geyer is one of several healthcare workers to receive the Pfizer vaccine at Central Maine Medical Center today. And shortly after receiving it, doctors like Alicia Plummer, who work closely with COVID-19 patients, went right back to what... Unbelievable, guys. Geyer? Dr. Claudia Geyer? Look at Geyer, Pythagorean 33. Every time they've been doing all along, taking care of the community. My next step, I am off to work now. <laughs> well, Dr. Plummer says she feels a little safer now, but plans to use the same precautions she- Dr. Plummer? Pythagorean 33. Both doctors' names happen to be Pythagorean 33s, Geyer and Plummer. Give me a break, that's crazy. She has throughout the pandemic. With the Pfizer vaccine, it does require a second booster three weeks after the first. A Dr. Geyer says the opportunity made her feel honored, beyond grateful. So yeah, they are rolling them out. Today is day two. Uh, we're not going to read this. Spare ourselves the cancer. Let's see what else they're posting, though. Even the Bangor Daily News, the main CDC now reports there are 187 Mainers that are hospitalized with, you know what? Of those, 46 are in critical care and 18 on ventilators. And look at this blasphemy. Love thy neighbor with a face mask. Oh my goodness. Even the Bangor Daily News. The Bangor Daily News is the only newspaper allegedly not owned by Reed Brower in the state of Maine. So it seems like they might have been owned by Reed Brower. Because <laughs> it looks like they're going along with all this. That was eight minutes ago they posted this article. Uh, we don't have to read it. Here's the article we just looked at with the dual 33s right here. These two ladies, the dual 33s. Let me see if I can pull up a Grand Sovereign Dual 33. Hopefully one comes up. A uh, Sovereign Grand Commander of Scottish Rite of Freemasonry will often wear a Dual 33 symbol. Now, this is not a good example, but um, come on, it's got to be somewhere. Let me look. Let me type in Grand Sovereign Mason Dual 33. Okay, here we go. So you see on the sky's chest, you see your dual 33s right here. They're always they're always kept by one another. And then you, of course, the phoenix. And now look at the top. Let's go ahead and save this image and pop it up because, you know, it's not just a quinky dink that both doctors in that article have, you know, Pythagorean 33s in their name, numerology. It's not a random thing, right? It's because 33s are always paired with one another, the duality and... This is how they communicate. This is how people in the know can communicate with one another. And at the top of his hat, we have the multi-cross, which is a symbol of Baphomet, of the devil. And that can actually be seen in... Let's see if I can find it. Okay, and you can see right here, it's a little grainy, but you can see the same symbol in the red box. This is a photo of Aleister Crowley, a portrait when he was younger, and he's letting us know that this multi-cross symbol stands for Baphomet. Yeah, classic. So, I don't, you know, I don't think it's a coinky dink that both of these doctors just happen to have Pythagorean 33s for last names, but that's just my opinion. And you can see here, Maine CDC Director Dr. Narav Shah will provide a state C-19 update 2 p.m. Wednesday. Don't miss it, guys. <laughs> Look at this photo. VAX day two. More Maine healthcare workers get their first jabs. Check this out. Ugh. Let's blow this up real quick. Ew. Look at this, you guys. Wow. It's happening. <laughs> Look at this cuck. <laughs> Stupid face masks. Wow. What else we got going on here? Oh, just a bunch of actors. Great. Love it. <laughs> line, line them up. Let's go. I'm ready. I want both mine at once. 
Maine CDC reports 551 C19 cases and two deaths. Uh, let's click this, mainepublic.org. Look at the photo. Look at the photo they use. Give me a break. That's all it says. Uh, one of Maine's last LGBTQ plus bars fighting to stay alive while shuttered in pandemic. Guys, this is coming from Fox. <laughs> Fox News. Of course, it's it's okay when it's a gay company, when it's a gay bar, a gay business. Everybody feels bad for them. But God forbid a heterosexual bar wants to open up or wants a little bit of condolence or pity for what they're going. Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. We only care about gay small businesses at Fox News in Maine. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at this photo. Of course, we got an all C and I right off the rip. We got the red and blue Masonic symbolism, of course. Hmm. Sketchy. Let's see what bar it is. What a joke. <laughs> oh, man. Let me try and uh, find the article. There we go. Portland, Maine, the city's only lgbtq bar really that's the only one in portland okay I know, I know of a handful it has been shuttered since the start of the pandemic now after eight months with closed doors dry beer taps and a silent cash register blackstones is asking for the public help to stay in business blackstones okay sorry guys we gotta take a we gotta take a sidewinder real quick let me uh show you something i got nothing wrong with homosexuality i don't care you can do whatever you want but let me just show you what's in the neighborhood next to Blackstones, I think you're going to be shocked. Especially if you have kids that maybe go to school at USM or Mecca that live in Portland. There's a lot of young people here. You know, you might want to know that Blackstones is located right next to a masturbation company. What is a masturbation company? Well, if you've seen the movie Boondock Saints, you might be familiar with this sort of thing. They are small, closet-sized, blacked-out rooms where you pay money to watch pornography and masturbate. Yeah. Yeah connected to Blackstone, so I'd imagine they might be owned by the same person. Blackstone's has a big old sign on it that says Homo Riot. Once again, like I said, I have nothing wrong with homosexuality, but I do have a problem with masturbation stores, <laughs> which are kind of weird. Let's see if we can find this. Hold on. Okay, there's Cumbies. Okay, let me show you this. I'll show you Blackstone's and then what's next to it. Okay, so here is Blackstones right here. Super, super proud, super prideful gay bar. Uh, no big deal. But look what's next to it. Like I said, I don't know if it's the same order, but I think it's the same owner. Oh, look at that. How how great. It's uh, it's blocked out somehow. Yeah, it's called the treasure chest. It's a pedophile hotspot where you can go jack off. And I imagine you can go buy certain types of pornography there. Not saying I know that for sure, but it's disgusting. You see the blacked out everything? You go in here, you pay money, you go into a closet, you pick your pornography, and you jack off. That's what that building right next to Blackstones is. So if that's not bad enough, right across the street, Congress Street, address 666 is another blacked out sex store. And you can see the number right there. I think you guys can probably see that, 666 Congress Street. So, yeah, um, I don't care about Blackstones. I hope they don't go out of business because nobody should be going out of business because of this nonsense. But, Fox, what are you doing? <laughs> and once again, just so you guys know, just like in Boondock Saints, attached to Blackstones is a masturbation store. As if masturbating in your home isn't good enough. You have to go out in public. Why would you have to go out in public? Why would you have to go spend money on a service to masturbate? Think about that, guys. Maybe they're masturbating to something that's a little hard to come across. I don't know. Not making any accusations, but Blackstones is connected to it. Pretty weird. Once again, <laughs> I have no problems with homosexuality. I'm just simply stating the fact that there is nefarious actions going on around Blackstones. Okay, it first opened on Pine Street in 1987. Blackstones is known for its laid-back neighborhood vibe. Anti-gay vandals repeatedly smashed the front windows out with rocks and bricks in the early days in 1991. Is that really important to this, <laughs> Fox? This is so bad, guys. 
Blackstones. Let's see if that pops up on the numerology. Unbelievable. But yeah, right next to a masturbation store. And we get a 31 with Blackstones. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Breaking Maine has set another single day record with 551 new cases. Two more Mainers dead. That was four hours ago. Uh, 17 hours ago, Portland's Cross Insurance Arena remains dark. Yeah. Guys, I can't even get a call back about a job. Like, I'm literally trying. There are no jobs. <laughs> this is, um, if you know of one, or if you know of a company that's hiring, I, I'll literally put on the Woo Flu diaper. I can't find a job anywhere. It's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> so we covered that. Now we got to talk about the lie of the year. This came out this morning, guys. Uh, I'm over at PolitiFact's Twitter. PolitiFact is the home of the truth o -meter and independent fact-checking. Okay, check this out. The pinned tweet, PolitiFact, lies infected America in 2020. The very worst were not just damaging, but deadly. PolitiFact's 2020 lie of the year, C-19 downplay and denial. This is called revelation of the method. So they're telling you openly that the biggest lie of the year was C-19, but they're saying C-19 denial instead. So for people with eyes to see and ears to hear, we understand what we're looking at. But for the vast majority of sheep, they're like, yeah, that was the biggest lie of the year. Let's uh, click on this. Facts are under assault in 2020. <laughs> Check it out. Lie of the year. C-19 downplay and denial. Wow. If that doesn't tug at the heartstrings, I don't know what type of picture will, right? She literally got her hand on her heart like, good lord. <laughs> this woo flu. <laughs> what a joke. PolitiFact, the Pointner Institute. What's Pointner? Let's uh let's see if we can find out. Pointner. That's a weird word. Child A in 32. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> this is so ridiculous, you guys. Romelia Navarro. I can't let that name go. Navarro. Is it a an A? It's an N-A. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Romelia Navarro is comforted by nurse Michelle Yunkin. Oh, my goodness. This is ridiculous. Okay. As she weeps while sitting at the bedside of her dying husband, Antonio, at St. Jude Medical Center in Fullerton, California... <laughs> This is written by Daniel Funk and Katie Sanders. Oh, my goodness. What's this guy's name? Daniel? Daniel Funk? Okay. So, a Florida taxi driver and his wife had seen enough conspiracy theories online to believe the virus was overblown. Maybe even a HOAX. So, no mask for them. Then they got sick. She died. A college lecturer had trouble refilling her lupus drug after the president promoted it as a treatment for the new disease. A hospital nurse broke down when an ICU patient insisted his illness was nothing more than a flu. The nurse broke down. What? Dude, this is so funny. Is there a video? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just so much death. El Paso nurses tweets about working with ICU patients go viral. This is a political agent, you guys. I live next to huge hospitals. Nothing's going on. They're empty. Now. Story of a nurse going viral after tweeting about an exchange with a COVID patient who she says was a COVID <laughs> denier. ABC7 Shelby Montgomery has a look at that Twitter thread. She joins us live now. What a Shelby. bigot. Anybody who denies this is a bigot. Stephanie, Eric, this nurse decided Where's her mask? She reached her breaking point working in the COVID ICU and decided to resign. The same day oh, she had that interaction with thing. that patient was also her last shift working at one of the El Paso hospitals. Hmm. So they're saying her last patient came in and said that C-19 wasn't a thing. And she was so upset that she quit. What if... She was just like, oh my god, you're right. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I don't know. That would be just funny. so much death. And it, it's just so sad. Ashley Bartholomew, oh my goodness. Oh, nurse for there you go. Several years. TikTok tweet, nurse. She says she was recently transferred from the OR to the COVID ICU. It, this is 
the most tragic, overwhelming, craziest thing. Why are you smiling I've ever then? Experienced in my life. After months of working oh my pandemic, gosh, look at her. protesting for more personal protective equipment back my in my May, my Ashley decided she reached a breaking point. She told the hospital she was leaving. On her last day, she tweeted about oh an my eye gosh. opening experience. She says she was checking on the 25 patients in the COVID unit. Her last patient was awake and watching the news, which she called fake news and said COVID is like the flu <laughs> was bold enough to kind of speak back and what like a I bigot said, be brutally honest with this person um and say you know this is the most death i've ever seen in in my 10 years of being a nurse a few hours later ashley was transferring that patient to a lower care unit wheeling him past the other sick patients she tweets he says one more thing thank you for telling me what you told me it's much more than the flu i was mistaken <laughs> it's just really a moment of clarity where oh thank um, goodness guys right yeah we have so yeah. much more work to do <laughs> did you see that face hold up look at her face Ready? The flu. I was mistaken. Just really a moment of clarity where, um, yeah, we have so much more work to do. You gonna trust that face? You gonna trust that face? I'm not gonna trust that face. I'm gonna trust the CDC, my local authorities, because they're always right. And we all need to wear our masks, stop the spread, stay the course. It's not a joke. It's very, 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 very serious. Um... Listen to this. We're back at PolitiFact. Lies infected America in 2020. The very worst were not just damaging, but deadly. So now words actually can kill. No more sticks and stones may break my bones, you guys. This is, this is 2021, almost. Words can kill. Words, just like guns, kill. Not people. Okay. President Donald J. Trump fueled confusion and conspiracies from the earliest days of the you-know-what. He embraced theories that C-19 accounted for only a small fraction of the thousand upon thousands of deaths. He undermined public health guidance for wearing you-know-whats and cast Dr. Anthony Fauci as an unreliable flip-flopper. Um, I mean, if we go check with the CDC, yeah, that's, that's kind of true. I can't, you know, I don't want to get this video pulled down, but um, what's highlighted right here, I mean, the, the CDC admits that. What, 6%, remember? Six, a little over 10,000? Okay. But the infodemic was not the work of a single person. Oh, no, you guys. An infodemic? Wow, this lines up perfectly with Klaus Schwab's cyber pandemic that he's been talking about in the past few days. Anonymous bad actors offered up junk science. Online skeptics made bogus accusations that hospitals padded their C-19 numbers to generate bonus payments. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to respond, but we know what we know. Influential TV and radio opinion hosts told millions of viewers that social distancing was a joke and that states had all the personal protective equipment they needed when they didn't. Okay. It was a symphony of counter-narrative, and Trump was a conductor, if not the composer. The message, the threat to your health was overhyped to hurt the political fortunes of the president. Conductor and composer. We got our CC. 33. Let's see if any of them come up. Probably spelled that wrong. Who cares? Composer. Nothing. Okay. Every year, PolitiFact editors review the year's most inaccurate statements to elevate one as the lie of the year. The award goes to a statement or a collection of claims that proved to be of substantive consequence in undermining reality. It has become harder and harder to choose when cynical pundits and politicians don't pay much of a price for saying things that aren't true. For the past month, unproven claims of massive fraud have tested democratic institutions. Okay, oh my gosh. Meanwhile, the virus has killed more than 300,000, a crisis exasperated by the reckless spread of falsehoods. What do you mean? How is how is how are things getting worse if we've been social distancing and locked down and wearing face masks for like nine months? Anybody? Look at they have a video, I think. In times more lethal than the seasonal flu. What? COVID nineteen is the damn flu. No. <laughs> That no, that's crazy. It's not the flu. Hey, I'm Katie with Politifact. Okay. Twenty twenty. Holy crap! That is a man. 100% right off the rip. I don't even need to question myself on that. 
Hey, I'm Katie this with is Politifact. Fact. 2020 is thankfully coming to a close and it's time to announce our lie of the year. This is an award no one should really want. We use the word lie once a year when we look back at a year's worth of fact checking and find the falsehood that proves to be of real consequence. A year's when worth of fact checking. When you think of 2020 for many years to come, you will think of the coronavirus. Its consequences can oh be felt gosh. from coast to coast, around the world, through every facet of our daily routine. Oh the threat my God. of the Wait, pandemic hold on. has been down. Yeah, they were touching elbows. I'm glad to see that. But they weren't masked up. That's fucking tyranny. The threat of the pandemic has been downplayed at multiple levels from the very beginning. Listen to this music. The 2020 live of the year dun. goes to denial and deception of COVID-19. <laughs> there were too many claims from too many speakers to choose just one as the Ew, recipient dude, of this, this year's is a award. Man. All year long, we were bombarded with conspiracy theories and fake science intended to minimize the threat. The false claims came in White House press briefings and campaign rallies. We're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner. It's going away. The president never downplayed the virus. On primetime shows. This is such well, a joke. Intuitively, I think it probably seemed like social distancing would be necessary. There was no... I can't even do it, guys. Um, let's go back to their Twitter before I let you go. Wow. We spoke with the blonde R. Okay, yeah, the same actor that all the fake news is going to talk to, the blonde nurse who just couldn't do it anymore. She had a breakdown because her patient didn't think it was real. Uh, along with medical experts and community leaders, journalists will play an important role in educating the public about VAXs. Journalist. <laughs> I didn't know we had those still. HHS Secretary Azar said today that Americans' VAX confidence is rising, citing new polls from ABC and Kaiser. We previously found public opinion is fluid and educational efforts can increase comfort in a VAX. Well, you guys saw it here. We got the lie of the year. Wonderful PolitiFact. Thank you so much. Um, definitely want to leave you guys with this photo because this is a global pandemic. There is nothing funny about any of this. And we need to stay the course. We need to social distance. We need to wear masks. We need to increase the amount of propaganda, positive propaganda. We need to get the bigot out of the White House. And we need to just make sure that whether it's Canada or China, anybody who wants to come to America can come to America. And, you know, as long as they wear a mask, we're good. Yep. Let's look at this uh, wall. And then I'll let you guys go. It's pro I'm sure there's a bunch of one eye symbols and butterfly, monarch butterflies. Yep. There's your monarch. More butterflies. Of course. Wow. What a joke. <laughs> All these random languages that nobody speaks in America. Uh, wow. Well, I'm pretty. I'm quite disgusted. I'm sure you guys are too. But thank you, Politifact. Once again, thank you. Where would we be without you? Probably dead. Uh, God bless you guys. I'll be back in a little bit because I I got nothing else to do all day. Take care. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeat in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air, and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war, and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking.